So we are going to kick off this round table momentarily, but we wanted to reach out to economists, business leaders, thinkers, intellectuals uh, who are working for the African continent. We wanted to hear what they had to say. Let's listen to them first. À mon sens, le grand enjeu du moment, c'est de reprendre en main la définition qu'on se donne du développement. Tant qu'on essaie de, de d'imposer des modèles, on ne laisse pas assez la capacité de produire des nouveautés. Je crois que trop souvent, on essaie de d'importer des solutions qui ont marché ailleurs, qui sont des buzzwords, qui sont des choses. Euh, allez, tout le monde en parle, donc euh, faut pas qu'on soit en marge. Il faut faire la ville intelligente, même si on ne sait pas ce que ça veut dire. Je souhaiterais que le continent en fait se nourrisse des erreurs qui ont été faites dans le monde occidental. Et justement, ne répète pas les erreurs passées qui euh, sont aujourd'hui les freins et, euh, et les écueils. And I would like to see our um, countries like Africa and Asia and South America not to copy the failed western economic industrial system. Je crois que nous devons pour les générations actuelles et futures faire ce travail de reconquête de notre histoire, pas dans un esprit de, de revanche, mais dans un esprit justement d'asseoir le process de développement sur des bases solides. Quand on parle de nouveaux narratifs, c'est aussi montrer que l'Afrique peut produire par elle-même, consommer pour elle-même, mais aussi faire partie des principales forces de créativité à l'échelle internationale. This is what even Africa um, can also bring to the rest of the world in terms of its technology and how it is solving human-centered problems um, in, 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 in Africa and hopefully solving that for the rest of the world. Moi, comme investisseur à impact, je regarde beaucoup le supplément d'âme. Je pense qu'il est important de remettre l'humain au centre de tous les enjeux, au centre des problèmes, au centre des solutions. Ça veut dire euh, écouter les populations, et trouver des solutions avec des populations. It's about also bringing all the actors together. We really need to get one person can't solve this issue. So, or these issues, we need to get everybody involved and taking part in um, in um, solving the problem. Apprendre peut-être à travailler autrement de manière plus collaborative entre le secteur public, le secteur privé, le secteur académique, les start-up, les grandes entreprises. Et, et là, c'est euh, c'est je pense une leçon d'humilité pour tous. Comment est-ce qu'on fait que le sens ben, soit la boussole quoi. Il nous faut travailler aussi sur des récits qui nous donnent envie d'avenir. Il y a une forte solidarité internationale euh, dans le mouvement climat, dans le mouvement de, de défense des droits humains, euh, parce qu'on a besoin aussi de se serrer les coudes. On est devant un, un changement d'air planétaire et on est en train de déterminer quel va être ce changement. Donc euh, les, les échanges d'expérience sont euh, très enrichissants entre des groupes, que ce soit euh, en Amérique du Sud, en Afrique. Ce n'est que dans l'échange et dans, le, et dans, et dans la conscience de, la, de l'interdépendance, justement, et de la totalité organique heureuse, que l'on peut être dans un vrai échange. Quoi. C'est le lien qui est important, c'est la reliance, c'est ça. Dans le fond, l'individu n'est pas séparé Il ne peut s'épanouir que dans la communauté avec autrui et dans l'amour avec autrui. So, let me now invite our speakers to join me on stage for the first round table. We have the European uh, Deputy Chrysula uh, Zakharopoulou, French MP Hervé Berville, Khaled Ige, President of the Club 2030 Africa, Serge Ikwe, who is the President of the West African Bank, BOAD, Gunduns, once again, Director General of the International Partnerships at the European Commission, and Achille Mbebe, who is a philosopher, historian, professor of history and political science at the University of the uh, jo- uh, in Johannesburg, and he is connected uh, with us uh, remotely. Um, 
sans une personne qui a un petit peu de mal à nous rejoindre, mais fort heureusement. Fortunately, we have most of uh, the, uh, the participants with us uh, physically present. Uh, one of them uh, remotely. Achille, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. So again, welcome to all of you. The Montpellier uh, Summit. Um, postulated that there was a, a new narrative to be forged between France and Africa. I would like you to launch the discussion by sharing the conclusions of the consultation you conducted on this occasion. Thank you very much. The Commissioner, Mr. Kuhn, I have just told us that's what they have just said. But what is the question in front of us? The question is, what are the issues related to our relationships between Africa and Europe? In other terms, how can we create something new together? How can we create new partnerships today and tomorrow? And once all is said and done, I think this is one of the main issues, one of the main subjects. France, under the impetus of Mr. Macron, is a great force in the world right now. It's a very exciting moment for Africa and for France. This issue has held our attention for quite a while. It came up at the new Africa-France summit in Montpellier. We spoke about the um, the all of the African youth. There were so many African youth who mobilized to participate in this summit. Throughout the year, we've been working on initiatives, bringing together France and Africa, especially those subjects that were the most important. And allow me to dwell on this for one minute. Among these issues that are so important, what we need to do is really take into hand our conditions of life, our standard of living. We need to take into hand our mastery of our own fate with the strength of our heritage, our knowledge, our creativity. All of this we can make use of. All of this can be and should be wielded in the name of development. And if this is true, and I believe it is, then we must steepen today our reflections on our purpose, on the purpose of our work, on our goals, our international relationships, and of course, development. One of the great teachings of this experience is that the word development is no longer relevant. This word no longer has its place. I think we need to replace it. Our new term should be partnership, including at the international level. This will help solve the issue. And why? Well, it's because we, in Africa at least, we refuse the traditional notion of development, which is the destruction of the very fabric of life. It's this destruction of the fabric of life that we must put to rest. We need to create a new idea of what development means, a new idea of what 
life will look like. This is the first point that I wanted to add to this debate. It might seem rather philosophical, but I believe that we can't move forward without considering what philosophy has to offer us. We must also think about unity, about drawing together. We need to bring the, the notion of universality into our approach. We need to bring it into our projects. So that is where we should start. And this is what I took away from the experience in Montpellier. And there's a second point that I would like to share with you. An alliance that will last for a long time is an alliance that is equitable. For an alliance like this to take shape, we need new forms of investment. Mr. Macron has called this solidarity investment. And I think that these investments must be a pillar of our plan. We must invest simultaneously in democracy and in culture. These are two major themes of our future. I believe, honestly, that democracy and culture are the two pillars of a sustainable society. Democracy and culture are not just an affair for small and medium-sized companies. These are notions developed by large companies as well and multinationals. This is so important for Africans today, for African youth, for people developing their own businesses. Democracy is a key part of our future. Our future hinges on this. And so, investment in democracy and investment in culture must be an integral part of our discussion. Because the future of Africa is at stake. I have one more point to bring up. What we have to think about is creating a common agenda to problems that we all face at the international level. We need to co-create this agenda. We need to work on it together. There was a report that the commissioner cited earlier that brought up this issue. In this report, all asymmetry was explicitly refused, both semantically and in practical actions. Our agenda must be co-created on equal footing. Europe does not have on its own all the tools for Africa's development. We need to co-create. We need to build together. We must work together, learn how to listen to each other. We must, in particular, take advantage of the dynamics on the African continent. We need to take advantage of this energy because this is what will allow us to build all of our dreams from the future. This is what I took away from the Montpellier summit. I am so delighted 
to be able to be present virtually today to share my thoughts to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we are delighted to have you here with us as well, Achille. So I will get the discussion started. So let me first turn to you, Chrysula Zakropoulou. You're a member of European Parliament, as I mentioned earlier. You are a rapporteur from the European Parliament for the new Africa-EU strategy. So, how do European Parliament members position themselves on this issue? What has been their contribution to the preparation of the EU-UA summit? Thank you very much. The European Parliament agrees with Achille, democracy and culture are at the heart of our approach. But I would also like to speak a little bit about the method brought up in this report. Perhaps because I'm also a doctor, as I shared with Kunz earlier in 2019, I said that I wanted to leave Brussels and go to meet our partners, our friends in Africa. So I did a tour of eight countries and I met politicians, representatives of civil society, people from the private sector and from the world of associations. And I can say, first of all, I can say that there is a lack of understanding of Africans from the part of Europeans and vice versa. Europeans and Africans do not always understand each other very well. I'm not speaking for governments, I'm speaking for people, civil society. And so, I've understood that it's time to reconceive of our relationship, but we need to put our finger on the heart of the problem. So that's the discussion that we've been having within the European Parliament. What's not going right in this relationship? What can we fix? What needs to be renewed? First of all, we understood that we, as Europeans, need to get to know Africa. What does that mean? It means that we need to have more dialogue. We need to be ready now to put all of our resources where they are needed. So, in the European Parliament, we understand that it's time for Africans to propose the solutions they would like to see. It's not our responsibility. They need to tell us what will be best for them. I'll give you an example of how I see um, our new partnership evolving. So we are, we were in the middle of the pandemic last year in the month of April and President Macky Sall came to Brussels and he said, you know what I would like? I would like to put my capacities for production at the service of the, I would like to put at your service the capacities of the university in Dakar. We have a lot of capacity. I would like to use them to help, but I need your help. And so, in Brussels, they understood that we needed to invest. We needed to provide support for them. Three months later, I was in Senegal on my tour of the countries. What did they ask for? First of all, trust, which we showed them. Second of all, an African solution which we understood. And third, what they asked for us was efficiency, speed, and it was there. Our funding instruments, our financing instruments were mobilized right away. And this needs to repeat itself. We need to keep going in this vein. I wanted to say something else as well. Like Achille said, why this relationship? Why this alliance? Through my discussions with many people, it emerged that Europe 
in the 21st century is a new Europe. Europe has its own values, it believes in democracy, it believes in partnerships. And I think that our other partners sometimes may tend to use brutality and perhaps a bit of a predatory, uh, predatory approach, and that's not our approach. This is a new generation in Africa. This is a new approach to the partnership with Africa. The rather brutal approach is not the approach of President Macron. It's not the approach of Africa. We're all in the same generation. Thank you very much, Chris Oula. So, Khaled Ige, your think tank, Club Africa 2030, wants to be a bridge between civil society and businesses and African politicians. Do you share um, her opinions so far? Does this correspond to the reflections that you have witnessed within your think tank? Thank you very much. What has been said is very important, but I would like to hone in on one point. I think that for my generation, the most important element to a new type of partnership is training and education of youth. For me, everything else is Everything else is superfluous. This is the most important part. Think about it. We have a very young population in Africa today. 70% of the African population is under 30 years old. We have tremendous human resources and natural resources in Africa. In Europe, your population is more mature in terms of demographics, and you have technology, marketing, and a certain type of uh, knowledge. What we need to do is reinvent multilateralism between Europe and Africa. This is extremely important. And you have, may have noticed that if we take into account the scaling, the scaling impact of training and education for youth, this corresponds to investment in all the sectors, transports, health, agriculture, and so on. It's at that point that you'll see the Europe-Africa vision com converge with the vision of civil society, politicians, and, and local authorities. I think that in 2022, it's appropriate to talk about renewing the partnership between Europe and Africa, because over the past 30 years, Europe has not considered Africa as a strategic partner. Let me be direct. Europe has still not decided to connect its fate to that of the African continent. And I'll tell you why. 30 years ago, European companies decided to outsource a lot of their operations to Asia, and especially in China. And what did they do? They contributed to increasing trade between China and African countries. Why is that? Because China went to Africa to get the raw materials, but also to get this, to enter the European market this way. If 30 years ago, Europe had decided to turn to the African continent, then in 2022, we would have more industry. We would have co-built, we would have been co-entrepreneurs. And so this is something that the pandemic is showing us, that Africa is a great producer of cotton, for example. We would have been able to provide so many masks to Europe. So let me sum up my thoughts in three, in three main themes. We need to renew this partnership so it can be a win-win partnership over the next few years. And what we need to do is we need to have Europe choose Africa as a strategic partner. That way, we will be able to move together toward real multilateralism. Second of all, we need to scale up for training and education for African youth and create a common agency for sharing skills and technology. Third point, we need to create a framework, an incentivizing framework that fosters co-construction. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Serge Ecoué. Euh, Thank you very much. Que, Serge Ecoué. As a banker, have you noticed that Europe may have missed the mark? Has Europe missed the opportunity to tie its destiny to that of Africa? Thank you. I don't. I'm not a philosopher. I'm not a semiologist. Uh, I am a practitioner. I am a banker. I am fundamentally a banker. And what is important for me and for the bank that I lead today is to finance the development of our region, to bring, in clear terms, is to bring the cheapest resources possible, the longest maturity possible. Uh, that is uh, how we, um, you know, create the liability. And then uh, on a positive side, we need to create uh, concrete uh, projects, uh, projects would have an impact and would change the people's life. If we don't change people's lives, uh, we are useless. And uh, what do I notice? Uh, when you look at the composition of our shareholding shareholders, uh, we have uh, shareholders which are regional, which are non-regional, uh, and uh, well, you have eight non-regional shareholders. Four of them are European, particularly France, who plays an essential role. And uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, we never talked about donations. Uh, we not never talked about philanthropy. We talked about development. We talk about transactions, we talk about impact and uh, realizations. So uh, the very practical nature of what we do led me to believe that it's the right way to do things, because we have the capacity to work with all the partners uh, worldwide, in particular with France, because France is Team Europe today, uh, constitute uh, the bulk of our partnership. But uh, when it is uh, about uh, the, um, uh, the um, financing of uh, companies, it is uh, uh, something that we do together. And the debate, the thematic debate, semiologic debate, uh, uh, is very interesting, I'm sure. But uh, I can sh assure you that uh, we we are concerned when it is uh, uh, about to uh, uh, achieve an electrical plant. Uh, for us, it's a transaction. It's first and, form and foremost a transaction to which uh, we can uh, bring expertise in the constitution of the works uh, and to bring about the financing, the mode of financing and once again the cheapest possible and the longest possible, uh, these are elements which are compatible with development. Um, so if I uh, hear you well, the words uh, uh, AUX are more important than the word OTS. So to, uh, to for this you need action. So we, uh, this, nothing is more important than that. If you don't change people's life, uh, your, your work is uh, useless. Um, so I will go to you, Kundun, some uh, this uh, change of narrative. Um, uh, you've decided to live it. Uh, you said it uh, in the opening of this event. Uh, uh, your uh, director, uh, director general, have gone from DEFCO to INPA, and you have moved from development to international partnership. Uh, uh, what we learned by listening to Achille Bembe, maybe um, the notion of a partner doesn't go far enough. Uh, so, what do you mean? Uh, what do you what, what do you say? Do you say? What, can you tell tell us what it means? And and how do you work with your team? So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, that uh, apart from a strong uh, um, you know, clothing uh, alignment. Uh, I'm happy that uh, our female friend has a, a, a difference in her, uh, you know, clothing. What I hear, what I hear uh, here and now is really not a surprise. Uh, I've had many interviews with some of you, and uh, there is really an alignment of thinking. Uh, this major questions of strategic choices uh, uh, to deliver the impact in the field, to co-invest, uh, uh, to 
work on the training. I think that uh, we are all aware that it's the, the path, the way to go. Um, what is the difficulty here? I w will not, uh, uh, you know, uh, tell you that it is uh, easy to change a reality, even though we have a change of name, which uh, before that, uh, for a year and a half, we had the reflection, but it's only a beginning. You don't change your paradigms that you've known for a long time. Uh, you, uh, you know, switch uh, the light on and off. And the change that we want, uh, in fact, uh, commits all our senses. Uh, it's a question of the brain, the software, of uh, uh, the, you know what we look at, what we hear, and it's a question of action. I think that uh, when we look at things, uh, it's very important. We, uh, we always say uh, in, in our approach that the, the beginning of all is the problem, the problem to which we need to find a solution. And you know uh, the expression for somebody who has a, 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 a hammer, each problem resemble a nail. So I think we are in this paradigm. Whether uh, instead of looking at uh, problems, we need to look at opportunities. Because as soon as you have opportunities, you uh, 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 I follow instructions. As soon as you see opportunities, you don't already have the answer, the solution to the problem. I really liked what uh, uh, one of the speakers said in the videos. The solution, the European solution, does not work, necessarily work in Africa. So we must uh, go from looking at the problem and the solution to looking at the opportunities. Because when you look at, at opportunities, automatically you want to listen, you want to work with others. And it's this approach that uh, will lead to this new ways of doing things. Uh, it starts with uh, percolating. It starts percolating, I can say so. It uh, percolates in Brussels. Uh, it uh, percolates here with the various members of Team Europe. Uh, uh, so those of you who put things in practical terms, but it requires time. And it's in that sense that we need to invest. Uh, this is why debates like the ones we have today are important. This is how the message that will get across at the summit will be important. And this is what we need to take with us for the rest of the summit. I hope that there will be also a change. As Serge and Khaled both said, it's a question of impact, of action, less words and more action in the field. And this is why we are also uh, getting in position to really deliver action. So uh, a change was uh, started, but it requires time. And uh, I will not uh, hide that from fact, that fact from you. So you say that this uh, change of paradigms uh, percolates in the uh, uh, French institution as well. Uh, and I go to you, Hervé Berville. Uh, you were um, the rapporteur of the Solidarity Development Law of August 4th. Um, uh, it's the Solidarity Development Law of, of August 4th. Uh, what are the main advances of this law uh, from the point of view of the reflection we are conducting today? Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I, I will stand up. Uh, I will be more com comfortable. I have a uh, capillary diversity. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And first of all, because you uh, talked about it, uh, and it's funny that you put it in this way, because we had a topic as to the name of the law. I, I would like it to go uh, a bit uh, uh, further and remove the, the word development. But the, the, the law uh, you know, requires that we need to find a compromise. So the law is the only law that was uh, voted unanimous, unanimously. Uh, so uh, it, it says something as to uh, the way I would like to thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs and all the teams of the Ministry of Economy and the Finance and all the partners, and particularly the FD, that made it possible to come to this consensus on the Assembly on the Assembly and the Senate. Uh, but I want to, I'd like to say something, because the question of uh, MOT, uh, well, uh, to, um, you know, to say nothing adds to the problems of the world. So so uh, when I uh, 
turn in my, rep my, rapporteur, my, rap my report, report on 2008 to the President of the Republic was to get out of this idea of development to change the names of the various agencies because I saw there, well, in my relationship with the African partners, it was a topic that was always on the forefront. Well, first of all, because our Western model, our European model, is not uh, uh, you know, their choice in the young people in African countries because other countries uh, uh, were able to get growth and prosperity without duplicating the European uh, model with, uh, uh, with uh, one size fits all does not work. The second thing is that uh, we saw very well that in the last 20 years, uh, new players, emerging countries, uh, uh, countries like China as, as well as Turkey, who now use uh, the L public aid to development as a vector of influence and therefore the monopoly of this policy is no longer uh, in Washington, in Brussels or in Paris. It's rather a good thing because it allows for reinventing the modalities of action, that we have to take that into action. Um, so we need to get out of this development uh, evolution uh, So because uh, uh, the uh, ultimate stage uh, would be Switzerland and we would uh, start uh, with a, an African country. So we need to get out of this. And the third element that you mentioned and uh, uh, you, the banker, is the question of the impact and the efficiency. So in uh, what I, I come from a uh, Côte d'Armor, the Brittany, uh, the, the major, uh, the, the best um, um, region in France. Uh, but uh, uh, we uh, forget that the public institutions uh, are, uh, um, you know, tired of uh, supporting the cost of, uh, uh, you know, interdependence. So we need uh, to review our actions, our cooperation, and to review multilateralism with Africa. And to uh, and the African opinions are a bit tired, of, uh, are uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, tired of uh, hearing uh, about a summit with millions of dollars. So what uh, what we mean? Uh, it on the Parliament because it was the desire of the president of the French president of the Republic. So in 2019, uh, the pandemic uh, um, postponed it. So in 2021, we uh, we um, voted the law on the development. So it was uh, in, in in a more global, uh, you know. Um, uh, environment. So we want to re review our position with the African because we worked on the memory, which is important for our partner, uh, uh, African partners. We, I was born in Miranda, so the idea of looking at your history in, in the face, the memory was important because we cannot prepare for the uh, uh, future uh, without looking at the past uh, uh, by you know looking into it. Uh, and so it uh, was a more um, global uh, idea, which is. Uh, um, which allows for uh, uh, making the people in, in my region the formidable uh, wealth of the African art. So I'm, I'm, I'm straying uh, a bit uh, away from the topic. So this was a more global framework of reinvention, of conversion of, 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 of things. So this law had three objectives, main objective. The first one, and I agree with you, is to say what? To say that, one, this uh, policy and Africa must be the priority, geopolitical, geostrategical, must be a pillar of our uh, foreign affairs policy. And so it means that uh, uh, we uh, bring this policy at the same uh, level as uh, diplomacy and uh, uh, military. And we say to our uh, uh, European partners, uh, and uh, what, this, what I do when I go before uh, the, the, the various parliaments, when I go to Bundestag, uh, the Africa is not uh, just a French uh, topic, because it's too easy to say when there's an African topic, the French will manage this. Uh, and to say we are partners in Eastern European, uh, well, you cannot see uh, Africa uh, only uh, in, uh, as a matter of uh, immigration or security. So we must uh, make African um, you know, policy a major uh, foreign uh, affairs policy. We need to have a global relationship. So it's not just a question of development and financing. It's a question of expertise, of relations, of mobility, of security, of uh, uh, immigration. What I really really like uh, uh, from this government, the relationship we have in France, is that we want uh, to have the whole uh, government of France. Uh, uh, so it's the Minister of Education, Jean-Michel Blanquer, who is uh, talking to his uh, counterpart in Mali, in Zimbabwe. Uh, so it's the Minister of Health, uh, French, uh, who uh, at the time of the reconstitution of the fund uh, against the, the um, um, HIV and so on, that will discuss with the um, African uh, ministers. And I was a bit long, lengthy, and I will uh, end with two points. Uh, we must absolutely to get away from the notion of uh, development and the quantitative uh, notion. So we need to have an agenda of results. So we need to have an agenda.
agenda uh, that will, uh, you know, we uh, spend X million of billion for country. It's important that there's an, if there's no spending, uh, we we uh, we have increased uh, uh, by five million euros our policy uh, in terms of partnership vis-a-vis -vis Africa. But what we want is to get around the table and to see what are the fights uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, with Africa: education, uh, health, uh, commerce, uh, uh, questions uh, of uh, um, climate change, and this is what we need to do. So that means two things: to have a real uh, agenda of results, so innovation and evaluation. And in the law, we have a mechanism which is the Independent Commission for Evaluation, which aims at not at uh, checking, but uh, to say in the end, evaluation is always the beginning of a of a job. Uh, part, you know, shared responsibility with our partners, what we did and what we want to do in the future, and we put the results on the table, we learn, and we also make it possible to increase our, our credibility and our influence with our partners. And the last point is the uh, issue of uh, trusting civil society to mobilize them. This is why it, in the law, uh, a, a lot of financing go to the uh, territorial uh, um, collectivities uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, at the end of the day, uh, to, we have to uh, uh, you know, lose the Im importance of the state, uh, and to say that uh, all uh, the uh, all the um, powers in, in society need uh, to to do this, because we will not uh, meet uh, the, the challenges of both sides of the journey without a strong relationship that, that will be uh, geared towards the future, and particularly the youth and the diaspora. So this is how we try to work in the National Assembly. But this is a continuity of the Wagadigu discourse, and this is uh, what uh, our Africa partners uh, uh, want to do for a long time, we uh, try to do it in the last two years. So thank you, Hervé Derville. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Kaladidje, would you like to answer this? Uh, is this uh, uh, the way that uh, France uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, you know, names Africa. Does this have an influence on the relationship? Because I ask you the question, because you published a, 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 a book called The Hour of Africa, uh, but you uh, also uh, mention an identity crisis of the continent. Uh, so, what's your answer? Uh, well, you, you're going to get me going for hours now. So, I believe that uh, there are some things with which my generation is not, uh, you know, in, in phase. So when we have an equal partnership, even in a, a human relationship, uh, um, you know, there is semantics, uh, and this semantic is really important. If I uh, go to the level of the nations, uh, from the point of view of economics, uh, if I uh, remember, uh, you know, I learned the French in, uh, in, in, in school, uh, we are not somebody with whom we have an equal partnership. We help one another. We talk about help between nations. Each generation in relative opacity must uh, fulfill its mission. Uh, so I think the sentence of France Fanon is true today. It applies to all the African nations that are um, in the process of building, but also to all African, uh, to all European nations which are looking for their identity. I think that if my generation were to find a mission, it would be to make sure that we have a shared prosperity. And it's only in, at, you know, then that we can talk about building a future together. Our responsibility as Africans uh, is to define our needs, uh, uh, to uh, get our projects going, to invest in the first uh, uh, you know, place, uh, in, 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 to have a uh, foreign investment, to have certain leverage. But you cannot speak of Africa and Europe as we talk about Africa and the United States. Uh, we are close here from a geographical point of view, and uh, we are close in, in terms of history. Uh, so we have to accept that there is some responsibility that are put on the table. This is what, uh, you know, I, I was born in Port Novo. I grew up in Cotonou. I came in France in 18. Uh, I was in the prep school for engineering school. I have a different approach uh, uh, of France and Europe uh, uh, that I have, you know, f compared to Asia. I don't have the same approach. 
So we would have to accept that if uh, we want to build this common future, at some point we need to sit down and define the rules of the games. I'll give you a, a, a very clear example. I was in Cotonou on vacation. And at uh, 4 o'clock, my nephew wanted to have, uh, you know, a snack. And uh, I was surprised because he asked for an apple. Uh, he asked for an apple. We were in Cotonou. When I was uh, a, 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 a young uh, a child, uh, I ate mango, I ate uh, pineapple, and it, it it called, uh, you know, my attention. I saw lots of apples on the market. Uh, I saw less uh, mangoes and less uh, pineapple, and it really, um, you know, you know, uh, drew my uh, my attention. So, uh, if, if 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 I we don't uh, reverse the tendency, uh, they will look for apples forever because they will not no longer produce pineapples. Alors nous avons. Okay, we have approximately two minutes left in this uh, first round table. Chris, I'd like to ask you to react and respond. Uh, first of all, because you are multinational and your background is multinational. Or, and uh, I, I had a conversation before this workshop with you, and during that conversation, you told me that you were surprised that the the consultation carried out by Achille Mbembe was carried out only in Africa. Could you tell us why, and and could you tell us why you think it is important to move move out of our comfort zone and keep it short? Well, so you're asking me to be brief. You didn't ask the others to be brief. So I, since you're giving me the floor, I'm going to keep it. No, but you had the floor before. Um, okay, you, you said several things. You said it's important to choose for Africa as a partner. Are you addressing the French or are you addressing Europeans? Because, you know, I worked as a surgeon up to two years ago, and uh, I worked also in, in politics between uh, Africa and Europe. I was born in Greece, I lived in Italy, and I now live in France. I'm, I'm an, a French elected representative, but I worked in Africa. Every single time I go to Africa, people tell me you, are, you sound French, but you have an accent. But the relationship is so much simpler thanks to my background, thanks to my origins. I think that I, I'm maybe more frank. Um, and so this new background to the partnership. I think this uh, new partnership is an opportunity. And, and I think all African countries need to understand that Europe is not just France and Belgium. There are 27 countries in Europe. And all 27 European countries, and that's exactly what Kuhn said, all 27 countries are willing and prepared to work together. And I, I think, uh, I think uh, that AFD, thanks to its experience, uh, can help other countries understand what you described. Africa should be seen as our partner. And, and I'm really happy to represent France, because France has that role to play. France has a role to support all other countries in, or in Europe who don't know Africa as well, for historical reasons, for uh, linguistic reasons. Uh, but those other countries have an opportunity because they don't have the background France has. So they can bring um, a, fresh, a fresh approach in the relationship they might develop with Africa. You know, I, I was in a, this debate on, with migration uh, about, about uh, migrations with the, the uh, Mr. Kagame and uh, the, uh, the, the mini uh, Greek minister, and uh, it was a very dis different discussion than what I hear in France. There were two heads of state, uh, two public representatives who were talking to one another, saying yes, no, and, uh, and that's that, that, that is very interesting. I'm, I'm very happy with the, uh, the, the French presidency of the 
the uh, European Union to, uh, f I think France has a really important role to play. Well, there you go. That was uh, a lot of things you said in a very short period of time. Thank you so much. Kundunz, we're talking about working together. Could you tell us about Team Europe? You mentioned Team Europe uh, during your introduction. What will Team Europe be like? Well, Team Europe is uh, is, a, is a beautiful, it's a wonderful story. The starting point of Team Europe uh, comes from the fact that Europe was not a real team. When we talk about foreign affairs, we talk about the member states, and each member state has its own cooperation budget uh, and so on. And all this was um, done in a more or less coordinated way, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. Um, and our starting point was to reinvent things and, 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 and see how we could make a bigger impact uh, thanks to stronger partnerships. And we um, decided to start by having our own partnership amongst ourselves. So with the different development ministries and foreign affairs uh, of different European countries, as well as bank, uh, your development banks like AFD and other banks. So we're talking about all uh, European development banks and financial institutions, plus um, agencies like uh, uh, GIZ and others to, to work together. And with the pr we, we then reached out to the private sector to see what we could do better, what what we could really offer to our African partners. partners. But first, we recognized we had to be stronger at home. So what we did is we looked at concrete initiatives. We, as you know, we have a multi-annual budget, and uh, with our African partners, governments, civil society, the private sector, local banks with uh, youngsters, uh, we established a dialogue to identify in, in, in what areas, in what sectors we had to focus, but also identify uh, uh, which key initiatives should be prioritized, prioritized and on which we, Team Europe, were going to work on, all together, all European countries. So we, we went through this process, which eventually um, spawned a list of, of very convincing, very powerful initiatives. And these initiatives will now allow Team Europe to be more present, make a, a stronger impact, and simply, I think, be a better partner for our uh, African partners. Okay, Team Europe obviously going to take a uh, play a key role in the summit starting tomorrow. Unfortunately, I'm not only the host of this session, but also the timekeeper. We're going to have to stick to the time, as you know. I'm going to ask Ashil Mbembe to join us again and conclude this roundtable. Ashil, we can see you. You're on the screen again. And and um, once again, the summit uh, is starting tomorrow. What do you think about the, uh, the Europe's answer? I believe you read the report, which was published. What did you think of it? And do you think it is addressing some of the questions we've identified during this workshop? I, I do think it covers, it addresses some of the questions. Uh, but a lot remains to be done. Like many other people, I believe that to fully address the issues and to answer all questions, Europe will need to learn and uh, learn uh, to consider, give Africa the consideration it deserves uh, as a political and cultural partner. Ideas are important, language is important, our imagination is important, as Mr. Berville said. I think uh, having a, a proper social analysis is important. I think the movement is important. Uh, we have a momentum. It should be amplified. 
Thanks to banks, we have financial instruments, but financial instruments alone do not suffice. Because at the end of the day, it is not just about technical or practical issues. I think what is important also to provide meaning. And again, I think that there is a, there is a real need for meaning. People need to make sense. And, and that's what's also behind some of the crises we're seeing, uh, the crises in some of our democracies. I think we need to switch gears. And to switch gears, you should shouldn't look only at the problems, but also look at the solutions. Many people out there invent solutions, come up with wonderful ideas, and that is what we need to explore, and that is, I think we need to give many people out there a, a voice, and uh, and and they, they deserve a, a momentum as well. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, when I started to respond to your question, um, I think uh, we've started the work, I think we a lot remains to be done. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave. I'm actually t catching a plane. But thank you so much for giving me uh, the opportunity to speak. Thank you indeed, Ashil. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone here. Thank you for this uh, very enriching workshop. I think we can give uh, our speakers a very warm round of applause indeed. Thank you so much.